All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, semester two of AP Bio. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is looking at how organisms control the expression of their genes. When we, when we ended last semester, uh, chapter 17 took us through how to make proteins, and now we know how to, uh, in this chapter, uh, control the production of those materials. So that is the big question, regardless of whether it's prokaryote or eukaryote, is how do we control the expression of those genes? Now, with prokaryotes, uh, we're going to have a situation that's slightly different, okay? So our focus uh, in this section is going to be uh, prokaryotic uh, control of gene expression. Now, prokaryotes are uh, unique in that they lack uh, a nucleus. So since they uh, don't have any distinct nucleus, the processes of transcription and translation uh, are, in, es in essence, uh, coupled or uh, continuous. So if you're going to regulate the expression of a gene, regulate whether or not a protein is produced, what makes sense is to uh, control it at the point of transcription. Um, this makes sense uh, visually when we imagine a little DNA molecule here. Uh, and along the DNA molecule, you have RNA polymerase enzymes moving and synthesizing strands of messenger RNA. Well, we can see here that immediately ribosomes uh, begin to attach to that messenger RNA and then uh, translate that information into polypeptides or little proteins. So there again, you can imagine, if we're going to stop the production of these proteins, we need to prevent transcription in prokaryotic cells. Now, uh, prokaryotes can, or in you know, eukaryotes as well, but organisms can uh, maintain uh, specific levels of uh, end products of metabolism by uh, either having those end products go back and inhibit an enzyme earlier on in the metabolic pathway, uh, which is a, a, a quick form of negative feedback, or you can have uh, a slower but uh, more uh, definite control of the production of uh, end products by actually switching off the genes that uh, produce those enzymes in the metabolic pathway, and that's what we're going to look at uh, today. Now, the key player in this process uh, would be the operon. The operon is the system that controls uh, the expression of those genes by switching on or off the uh, uh, machinery needed to produce those proteins. Now, uh, an operon itself is made of uh, a combination of the structural genes that actually produce the protein, uh, promoters, which uh, are the sequences of DNA uh, that are the attachment points for the RNA polymerase that makes the transcript, and the operators, which is a new term here, it's the, the structure or the sequence of DNA within the promoter uh, to which a, a special regulatory protein attaches. Now, uh, again, this is only seen in pro prokaryotes, and there are two major forms, inducible and repressible, and we'll talk about those here shortly. Uh, now, this is a, a little Im image of uh, uh, an operon. So we see uh, the DNA uh, in terms of the genes that will be transcribed to make these enzymes used to break down lactose in this case. Uh, but you also see uh, upstream of those genes uh, is the promoter where the RNA polymerase will attach and then the operator which is a, uh, it's good to think of it as like being a switch that can be switched on or off to allow RNA polymerase to attach and then go on and transcribe those genes. And back here is a little regulatory protein that actually produces this uh, key if you will that can switch this on or off. So if you're sort of working at looking at big picture stuff, an operon has three parts, a promoter, an operator, and then these structural genes. Please be familiar with each. All right, now let's talk first about uh, inducible uh, operons. Now, inducible operons are usually seen in metabolic pathways that are switched off. To induce means to force. So these operons are usually switched off, but they can be forced to be uh, turned on uh, when needed. Now, um, the classic example of this is the LAC operon. Uh, the LAC operon uh, produces a, a series of enzymes that are used to break down lactose or milk sugar. Now, um, here we see uh, an image of the LAC operon. Uh, you can refer back to earlier portions of uh, the Prezi here, where you have the enzymes that are made to break down lactose. We have the promoter, which is where RNA polymerase attaches. And again, RNA polymerase will slide along the DNA and make the messenger RNA. And then uh, back here is this uh, regulatory gene that produces this special protein called a repressor. Now the repressor, if you look, fits well uh, in the operator. And when the repressor 
this protein is attached to the operator, we see that RNA polymerase can't attach. So that prevents transcription, so these genes aren't made. Now, this makes sense uh, because uh, these genes are used to break down lactose. But if there's a low level of lactose or a low concentration of lactose in the cytoplasm, would it make sense for bacterial cells to produce lactose? Well, absolutely not. So typically, this operon is switched off. This repressor is attached to the operator, and you don't make the enzymes needed to break down lactose just because you don't have lactose. Now, if lactose is present uh, in the cell, it will have a form or an isomer called allolactose. Now, if we look, this lactose fits very neatly into an allosteric site of uh, the repressor. Now, when that happens, notice how it changes the shape of the repressor. This repressor no longer fits in the operator. When that happens, RNA polymerase can dock to the promoter and then zip right along and transcribe these genes into messenger RNA so then it can be translated into these, amino or these uh, enzymes that will break down lactose. So, uh, again, normally the lac operon is switched off uh, because there's normally a low level of lactose uh, in the cytoplasm of a bacterial cell. But uh, if you go and drink uh, milk at lunch or at dinner and lactose gets into the uh, cytoplasm of the uh, bacteria in your guts, then that lactose, some of that lactose, will bind with the regulatory protein uh, or the uh, repressor protein, and then that repressor protein gets pulled off the operator, doesn't dock with the operator, then RNA polymerase begins its work, and then you start making enzymes that break down lactose. So you can get the energy from lactose. Now eventually when lactose is broken down, uh, you won't have this allolactose uh, bond with, or bind with uh, the repressor. So the repressor now becomes its active form again, gets linked back in, and you've got uh, the operon switched off. So the whole idea with this is it, it allows bacterial cells to control the production of enzymes. And if they don't need the enzymes, they're not going to produce them. It helps them save energy and materials. Now, if you think about the type of feedback that is, uh, consider the fact that an end product has control over earlier steps in the pathway. So these enzymes, when they're made, are going to break down lactose. And when that happens, when lactose is broken down, you create an active repressor. So this is a form of negative feedback. Okay? Negative feedback maintains homeostasis. All right, the next type of uh, operon would be a repressible enzyme. Now, to repress means to stop or to prevent. So repressible operons are usually switched on. They're usually making some product, but they can be switched off. And the classic example of this is the TERP operon. TERP meaning tryptophan. Now, uh, tryptophan is an amino acid needed by bacteria. So since they constantly need some level of tryptophan, they're constantly producing it. So the operon is normally switched on, and they're making that product. And that's exactly what we see in this image here. So typically, this repressor is in an inactive form. It won't attach to the operator. So typically, RNA polymerase docks at the promoter and transcribes the enzymes needed to make tryptophan, or the, poly or the polypeptides needed to make tryptophan. So that's what is typically happening. Bacterial cells are normally uh, producing tryptophan. The operon is switched on. But like we said, it's repressible. If you have a nice big meal, Thanksgiving dinner, and eat lots of turkey, uh, and have higher levels of tryptophan that uh, are in your bloodstream, well, that tryptophan will eventually work its way to the cytosol of the bacterial cell. And when that tryptophan enters the uh, bacterial cell cytosol, you'll see that, ooh, it fits really neatly into that allosteric site of the repressor. And when that happens, it changes the shape. Remember, change the shape, change the function. The repressor becomes active, and now it binds to the uh, operator. In effect, that switches off the uh, TERP operon because RNA polymerase can no longer attach to the promoter. So what this does is allow cells to not produce more tryptophan than is needed. So when they need to make tryptophan, they're constantly making tryptophan. But if tryptophan's present, it's going to switch on this protein and that switches off the operon. Okay, so it's like the key that turns the switch to the off position uh, so that uh, you don't produce more tryptophan uh, than is needed. So um, let's see here, just other little tidbits. Uh, since tryptophan uh, works with the repressor protein, it's often referred to as a, a co-repressor. 
All right, so what kind of feedback is this? Well, again, we think about it. Uh, the end product, or tryptophan, helps prevent its own production. So this is another classic example of negative feedback. Finally, we're going to look at upregulation. How can we actually speed up the transcription uh, of certain genes? So we can switch operons on and off using the promoters and uh, repressor proteins. But how can we actually speed up the transcription of certain enzymes? Now, um, lactose is broken down uh, by bacterial cells as needed. But bacterial cells are going to preferentially break down glucose because they've constantly got the enzymes needed for glycolysis. So uh, when glucose is available, bacterial cells are going to break down glucose first. Now, if you have a situation where you have little glucose but quite a bit of lactose, well then what happens is you've got the lactose there, the repressor protein is switched to its inactive form, and you're going to be making some level of these enzymes to break down lactose. So that switches on the operator. So if you have lactose, it's going to switch the operator on. But uh, if there is little glucose, that actually corresponds to a high level of a, a molecule called CAMP. Now, don't worry about the names here in, in particular, but just recognize that this CAMP molecule can dock with another regulatory protein called CAP. And when that happens, it changes the shape of that protein. That protein then can dock on the promoter and help RNA polymerase attach to the promoter and transcribe the enzymes needed to break down lactose. So it's a really uh, fantastic and efficient means of controlling uh, the production of these enzymes. So you, you, know, you have the lactose present, so you switch on the operon so you can make those enzymes. And by using other proteins, you can help RNA polymerase attach to the promoter and make those enzymes more quickly, which is what the uh, bacterial cell wants or needs when glucose is in scarce supply and it needs more enzymes to break down the lactose. Now, uh, if uh, there is lactose present, you're going to switch off that repressor and you can make the lactase enzymes. But if there's not much glucose, or I'm sorry, if there is glucose present, uh, then there's relatively low levels of the CAMP. And if there are low levels of CAMP, then CAP remains relatively inactive. So what that means is RNA polymerase cannot attach to the promoter as easily. Uh, and that slows down the production of these enzymes needed to break down lactose. So what that does is it allows the bacterial cell to break down glucose preferentially, uh, and it still allows it to break down lactase, or I'm sorry, lactose uh, to some degree. Uh, so again, think of uh, these uh, means of repression as uh, volume control. Your book referred to it as volume control. So the repressor proteins um, act as an on-off switch with the operator, but the CAMP CAP system uh, foc uh, focuses on being more of a volume control. It can speed up or slow down that expression.